Uh, time to turn our attention to something very different. Last Saturday night, just days after a $5 million bounty was put on his head by the US state, Daniel Kinnan got an in-octagon shout-out from the US, uh, UFC fighter Munir Lazez. Alan Dawson's been tracking the Kinnan story and took him up on those comments at the post-fight press conference. We'll be joined by Alan in just a moment. First of all, take a look. I think the most important question is in your post-fight victory speech, you said if it wasn't for Daniel Kinahan, you wouldn't be here. Can you explain what you meant by that? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, that man is a friend and advisor, you know. He's, uh, he's the one when I was, he picked me up when uh, every time um, the life would kick me down. He's a real man of his word and, uh, you know, uh, he's the one who teach me what does it mean, a real family, a real friend, and, uh, you know, uh, it's, um, it's someone I cannot uh, thank him enough for uh, where I am today and who I am, uh, who I am today. Are you aware that Daniel Kinahan this week was sanctioned by the U.S. government because he, quote, sources large quantities of cocaine from South America? No, I don't know that. Okay, he was sanctioned on Monday by the US government and on I, Tuesday there's a five million dollar bounty on his head for information that might lead to his arrest. I think I'm here to, the, to entertain people, you know, and uh, I say, uh, uh, I give the credit to whoever, uh, I mean, uh, deserve credit. Uh, I, I'm not involved in this uh, kind of stuff. I mean, like, uh, uh, I, I don't know about it and I will investigate how, how, how it is and how it's go. But by name-dropping Daniel Kinahan, you're kind of legitimizing this figure in combat sports. No, it, it's, not, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not. For me, it's a simple thing, you know. It's a uh, friend out, outside the gym, you know. And just I meet him for advice and this, and he helped me through my career, so. At a press conference in Dublin on Tuesday, police there said, for a message anyone in combat sports who continues to work with him, that they're, and I quote, involved in a criminal network. I, 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 do I don't, I don't um, you know what I mean? I don't uh, follow really the, this kind of news. I focus in the sport, I focus in my family, I focus uh, and entertain people, and that's the most important, you know. Okay, there's people online who think that you've undone your win by shouting out Daniel Kinahan. <laughs> well, why shout out Daniel Kinahan if he doesn't want to talk about Daniel Kinahan? There's people Any online. other question, please? Yeah, and the man asking the uh, questions there is Alan Dawson, boxing and MMA reporter. He's written, reported and questioned extensively around Daniel Kinnan's involvement in those sports for the last few years. Joins us on the line now. Morning, Alan. Morning. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming on and uh, well done for being so persistent in your line of questioning as well. It seemed as if you were getting heckled a little bit from the room as that went on. Sorry, can you say that again? You were getting heckled a little from the room as that questioning went on. Uh, yeah, just from the, uh, I think it was a... Turned out probably to be a uh, one of his training member of his training team, probably a coach. And it, <clears throat> excuse me, I think he was asking, uh, well, demanding for the conversation to be moved on to the actual fight. But when you're uh, shouting out Daniel Kinahan uh, on a week, well, on Monday, let's go back. That Daniel Kinahan was sanctioned by the U.S. government uh, on Tuesday. There was a five million dollar bounty for information that um, might lead to his financial disruption, uh, arrest, or conviction, and all through the week, you know, my phone was then blowing up, uh, you know, sources wanting to speak and, you know, there's more people potentially embroiled in this mess and we're kind of seeing the undoing of some parts of UMP and boxing this week. Um, uh, I was speaking to a source at Discovery, uh, a $60 billion broadcast company over here in the US, uh, and, and they were doing additional due diligence on their Eurosports Probellum deal. So all of these things were kind of happening. And I, I honestly went to the UFC show uh, on the Saturday thinking, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. It's a day off from Daniel Kinahan news. So I just couldn't believe that on that week, uh, Manir Luzez shouts out Daniel Kinahan uh, on US soil uh, at a, U a UFC event, so that's a US company, on a live US uh, network on ESPN. Uh, it always just seemed wildly inappropriate so as soon as that happened i think it was only midway through the card i just went back to the to the press conference area to kind of wait for Lizzie's and and try and ask the first question oh, and the second and the third and the fourth uh, but yeah but by the time it got to the fourth one of his coaches was saying to focus on the fight but how can you, you know, the, 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 to be fair to Lizzie's, the fight was he, he had a really good he's always been a really good kickboxer great striker very uh, tv friendly style um but it's kind of, you know, there's bigger things going on. When you, we've seen it in boxing through the years with 
countless uh, people in boxing, boxers, execs, uh, speaking positively of, of Daniel Kinahan, um, you know, saying that he's a great guy and that he's great for boxing. And it just goes against everything that I've heard from Daniel Kinahan. I've heard that he's bullied his way to the top of boxing. Uh, I've heard that he's uh, an associate of his was strong arming people uh, into, into, you know, coercive deals. Um, one person said, do I need to call my friend in Dubai to straighten this out? And you know now, now we're seeing the fallout of 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 an alleged narco terrorist. What sort of you, you know people just even a, a, a rumored link with Probellum and and Duro and Eurosport is enough for Discovery to just completely bail from boxing. Uh, so they don't want to have any part of it now. So we're seeing sponsors, we're seeing broadcasters flee. Sponsors might follow suit down the line. Um, so the, the fight is irrelevant when you when you're bringing up Daniel Kinahan, in my point, in my opinion. So. Um, yeah, why shout out Daniel Kinahan if you don't want to talk about Daniel Kinahan? And then Manir Luzez said, you know, can we have another question on the fight? And I said, I've got no questions then. Like, there's so many fascinating things about what he said in that press conference yesterday or last week. And firstly, the fact that you maybe weren't aware of, of the Kinahan links and people weren't before last week suggests that his tentacles reach into places that people just have no idea of just yet. And then secondly, it's the, the nature of his relationship with these fighters. Like, this isn't... I, I don't know, questioning Eddie Howe about Saudi Arabia with Newcastle United. And he's like, that's nothing to do with me. You know, this this is uh, way above my head and something that I'm not involved in. These people are talking about deep, meaningful life relationships with this guy. This isn't just some sort of fight broker, some businessman who exists in the background. These people are coming forward with almost anecdotal information about how Daniel Kinahan has had a significant part to play in their life and their growth as, as humans. Like, it's extraordinary the the, the nature of these relationships. Yeah, they're all quite formulaic. I think they all kind of follow a similar theme that they're, you know, always, always what a great guy he is. Uh, they've helped with family and helped with other things. And um, it, what Laziz was saying kind of did echo what we've heard from, um, you know, prominent boxers, I think. Um, I'd, I'd be curious to hear from like pro Kinahan. I mean, we're probably not going to hear from, the, from them now, but I'd be curious what, what, how he actually helped in terms of boxing. You know, that, I feel like there's quite, it, some some things are still quite vague when it comes to how he's actually helped in boxing. Um, you know, one of the things people would pro Kinahan people would say over the last few years was that he's responsible for making the big fights happen, but he didn't make Joshua and Fury happen. And uh, if he's got any continued inv uh, involvement with Terence Crawford, one of the best boxers in the world, then one of the best fights in the world that can that could happen with Errol Spence Jr. and Terence Crawford that just can't happen. Showtime boss Stephen Espinosa has already been on record saying it would just be, probably, I think the, the exact word was uh, too prob problematic uh, because it's, it just involves too many legal things now. No US company, bank, financial institution can do business with Daniel Kinahan. So I'd be amazed if Crawford has, still has got a link with, with Kinahan. But, you know, he's, Kinahan's not been responsible for the big fights. He's bullied his way to the top of boxing, I've heard. Um, and Europe, the state of European boxing is in a bit of a mess at the moment. The, you talked about the prom, prominent boxers, Alan, like the Tyson Fury comments, none of my business, basically. And, uh, you know, I, everything I've ever seen about him, he's, he's a great guy. Now, those sort of comments have kind of uh, disappeared a little bit. They're just really at pains to say, look, it's none of my, none of my business. And, you know, I, I bumped into him in Dubai. I just bumped into the guy. What am I to do? What, I, the one thing I did wonder, what... And, and the same point almost about the Lizzie's, they are ha hamstrung. Like, they are between a uh, very heavy rock and a hard place in terms of what they can actually say here. Yeah, it, it, to be fair, fair, it is a legal thing. And, you know, they well, Lizzie's probably wouldn't have had any legal advice or PR advice before he got into that press conference. I don't think he was expecting uh, someone, maybe not necessarily me, but someone like me who actually has a bit of background knowledge on, on uh, you know, the cartel and... Daniel Kinahan's presence in boxing uh, to be able to put, push some questions toward him uh, about how it was quite inappropriate. But one of the things Laziz and Tyson Fury have both got in common is that they brought up Kinahan repeatedly. Well, maybe not Laziz, but he's brought it up once. Mm. Uh, but Fury's brought him up repeatedly. He's saying it's not none of none of my business and whatever else. But he's made it the public's business. He's made it the media business because even let's go back two years ago. Uh, just after there was that video he put on in, uh, Instagram, I think it was, where he said, "I'm just after getting off the phone with da with Daniel Kinahan, uh, get in there, my boy." 
Um, about two weeks later, he suggested in another post, which is probably deleted now, that Daniel Kinahan should be PM. Uh, so I presume that meant Prime Minister. I don't know if he meant the Prime Minister of England or the, um, the TS in, in Ireland. Mm. But he was still putting Daniel Kinahan's name out there in public. So I still think people, you know, Tyson Fury still has uh, ans questions to, um, to answer, particularly about uh, legitimizing or trying to legitimize Daniel Kinahan in, in boxing. He's, he's one of the most prominent people who has continued to bring in Daniel Kinahan's name. He's made it our business to ask questions. When you compare the two sports in question here, boxing you can see being quite vulnerable to this sort of thing because it is sort of the Wild West when it comes to who actually runs the sport, whereas with MMA, it's pretty clear who runs the sport. So what has been the UFC reaction to this on an official level? Has there been a request for comment? Have they said anything on this? Because this is a pretty significant connection between them and, and Daniel Kinahan, or between one of their fighters, I should say, and, and Daniel Kinahan. Yeah, so the, uh, I spoke to ESPN and the UFC, and the ESP, ESPN res response was uh, they, they declined to comment. Uh, and I, speak, I tried to speak to multiple people at the UFC, and it was it was hard to even get a no comment. Um, I'd still like to speak to Dana White about it, because both the UFC and Dana White seem to kind of portray this, you know, they want to be the bastions of free speech, and it doesn't really matter so much if an athlete comes in and says some heinous nonsense. Um because you know it's they're free to do that it's, it's the fight game uh, is kind of the messaging that we're getting from the ufc but there's got to be a kind of point where if, you, if you're shouting out an alleged narco terrorist who according to the high court in ireland is uh responsible for international cocaine shipments uh, weapon smuggling and execution style murders uh on a week where he's been sanctioned by the u.s government it's really isn't it it's, it's beyond inappropriate it's it's just like, you know, it kind of it can cause a legal headache for the UFC. And, and it's bad for American MMA. It's, bad, it's been horrible for, for European boxing, and it's just not needed in American MMA. So uh, an interview a few weeks back with the Irish boxer, John O'Carroll, and he gave some big indications about the Daniel Kinahan relationship being more than just the advisor stuff. It was very uh, thinly veiled around how much of a manager he was. Can you talk to us about your sense of what his role, you touched on it earlier on, but what his role with these fighters actually is, and I suppose in an extension, what happens now that uh, MTK has been shut down? Well, one of the things I wrote, uh, published on Wednesday at Insider, it was kind of like a message more to American MMA than it was boxing, because I feel like boxing's kind of um, grown its education base and knowledge of um, Daniel Kinahan. So, uh, and uh, to, be honest, uh, to be honest, when I, I've moved recently, I, I, was in, I was based in London and I've recently moved to Las Vegas. I've been here for about 10 weeks. Every single time I've been to an event, Daniel Kinahan has come up. It's been a really hot topic behind the scenes uh, in boxing. And I feel like MMA doesn't really know who, who he is uh, as much. Um, so that would be that would be one difference. I, I feel like uh, it's one of the things I published uh, this week was there's just um, uh, quite a few people on background talking about how... Um, just Kinahan behaves and associates of his have behaved over the past few years. Um, I don't really blame the boxers too much. I just think there's there can be victims in this and it's kind of hard to to know who who is and who's not a victim. Um, I feel like some people have got into um, working arrangements with Kinahan thinking it wouldn't have been as bad as what it ended up being uh, and then at some point over the years came to regret ever going into whatever working arrangement it was. Um, but there are people in boxing who have stayed quite clear of this mess. Showtime, Premier Boxing Champions, Mayweather Promotions, Al Heyman. You know, they've, they've rarely, if ever, dealt with, uh, dealt directly with Kinahan. I don't think they've ever dealt directly with Kinahan. When it came to Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder, I think that came, that, um, uh, the sort of managing of that fight came from uh, Shelley Finkel uh, rather than uh, Al Heyman and... Stephen Espinoza, but you know, while boxing has probably given itself a black eye, is what a lot of mainstream media will be going with. The other eye is relatively re relatively clean, and American boxing will probably still thrive through those companies I just mentioned. Um, but yeah, we're just seeing a bit of a crumbling in the European boxing scene right now. Uh, the MTK global roster was so big, uh, and it kind of is it was very top heavy with obviously Tyson Fury and um, Josh Taylor and people like this. But when you go further down to the lesser known names i'm just curious how long some people might be out of the game while they try and find management and 
whether they can, get, they can even get fight dates if broadcasters are going. So there, there could be some careers that are going to be on ice for quite a, quite a long time. Coming from that camp, is it hard for them to get new representation, new management, representation, advisors, whatever way you want to word it? Uh, there's just so many. There, there just might be so many of them mm. that that so that, that how many companies will be able to um, welcome all of them in? If broadcasters are going, and you know, it just depends how many fight dates they can really be offered to to um, for every single athlete in that MTK global roster to be able to have a home. Mm. And the T's and C's that they were on in their previous company may not be as good when they go to the next one, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we will watch that with interest over the next while. Um, I was interested to hear we had Kieran Cunningham of the Irish Daily Star who's reported on this over the last number of years as well on our show during the week on the radio show and he was talking about it uh, being the end game for Daniel Kinahan in boxing um, and I wasn't sure before I'd heard that whether this was like he'd lost the battle but would still try and win the war. Uh, is it the end game for him in your view, Alan? And also, what's to stop uh, the next Daniel Kinahan doing the same thing within either uh, within either sport? Yeah, good question. So I think, I mean, I've, I've got to agree with Kieran. I think if he's going to try and still control things behind the scenes, it's just going to be really difficult because, especially from an American point of view, it's hard to for people to... It's just a too too big of a legal headache. But, I mean, Bob Arum's already been saying on record uh, things about uh, Kinahan that you would think that how can they even do business again? But I feel like Bob Arum said a few things about a few people, especially Eddie Hearn, and then two hours later, they're on the phone trying to make a fight. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. With, with, with Aram, I can't imagine Top Rank will ever want to go um, uh, to try and do enter any arrangement with Kinahan again. I, I, even before the sanctions, I did hear that Top Rank had already been trying to move away from um, Kinahan and Kinahan-related people and figures and companies in boxing. Um, so from an American point of view, I, th- I feel like he's just shut out mostly because of the, mostly because of the sanctions. Um, in in Europe, I feel like Eddie Hearn and Matchroom moving to the zone. Maybe that might have been strategic to try and get away from Kinahan, because um, I don't think the zone have got any involvement as well. I think they're one of the companies that are probably going to come out of this quite positively. Um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be t- he's, he's got far bigger problems right now, in my opinion, uh, than thinking about anything to do with boxing. Uh, but with the second part of your question, there's just nothing. There's no, there's nothing boxing can do to. Um, well, there is. There's a lot of bo- things boxing can do, but that, I don't think anyone is motivated to to change um, how someone like Kinahan can come in with X amount of money and just, just grow a power base within, let's say, eight years. He's he's been able to grow to boxing's top table you know how how can that really change uh, i feel like the change has got to come from within and i don't have any confidence in anyone in the sport to be able to just have basic checks and balances that can uh, prevent someone like that from from coming in i did ask uh, a few politicians over the years probably since 2020 you know whether the uk government could do anything to uh, you know if if british boxing can't even govern itself by having someone like kinahan come in and basically control the game i've heard that various uh, executives have been quite subservient to Kinahan over the years. You know, if, if boxing can't govern itself, can the UK government do anything? But it got as far as the Department of Digital Culture, Media and Sport, and then it just didn't go anywhere from there. So, yeah, th- I don't think the government's ever going to do anything, and it's, it's just up to boxing to change. But I, 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 I've got no confidence it will. Um, but that's just, um, that's just boxing is what we keep on hearing. But... It's, it's sad because the things, the stories that we really should be celebrating is a couple of weeks ago, I was at an Ericsson Lubin Sebastian Fundora fight and it was the best fight I'd ever seen since I've moved here. Um, and, you know, that really celebrated the best of boxing. But then like two days later, I'm dragged into all of this, um, the, you know, this scandal because, you know, this is far bigger news, but really, you know, we should be celebrating the, the, the people that are going out and putting it uh, on the line in the ring when the high pressure situations and just uh, performing in in ways that you know average humans like me just can't even fathom that to me is the best of the sport and there's a lot of that that is going on but it's just constantly or has constantly been overshadowed by this Kinahan created mess 
just before we let you away on the the obviously uh, Fury White fight this weekend and how much this looms around that. Like, I mean, I guess, and it probably brings us full circle back to the initial question that we asked: How much of the narrative is is dictated post fight in relation to the Kinnan stuff depends on who's in the room to ask the question. And indeed, given what happened at the pre-fight uh, press conference, how many questions are actually allowed to ask? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think even in. Uh Tyson Fury's last fight against the, the third instalment in the Deontay Wilder saga, uh, Daniel Kinahan overshadowed that event as well because Nicola Talent published the book uh, Clash of the Clans, and and that really you know detailed the relationship between Tyson Fury and Daniel Kinahan. Uh, so for me, you know, Daniel Kinahan, the specter of of Kinahan was prevalent then, and it's prevalent again this week. Um, we we keep on hearing things from Tyson Fury. You never really know what 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 whether he's telling the truth or not. So I, I don't take too much stock in whether this is going to be his last fight. But if he does fight again, considering, again, this is the second fight in a row when Daniel Kinahan kind of looms over the whole event and it is because of his relationship to Tyson, whether that will just keep happening again and again and whether he'll just think enough. Because uh, he he does he did seem this week to be quite agitated by being questioned about his relationship to Kinahan. Um Maybe that will play on his mind, and it and it could affect uh, the result against Dillian White. If if that hadn't have happened, I think it would have been quite a routine Tyson Fury win. Uh, and it's also again, it's quite annoying that this is even happening because, mm. to be fair to Tyson, he is one of the best heavyweights for a, a long time. Well, certainly since Len, Len, Lennox Lewis. Um, but if you know if he keeps on winning, he's already um, got two wins and a draw against Deontay Wilder. He beat Vladimir Klitschko. Um, you know the last uh, all-time great, and it's just uh, you know if, if if we could be talking about uh, you know one of the top fifteen heavyweights of all time, but instead we're talking about relationships to an alleged narco terrorist. Uh, Alan, we've uh, keep up the good work. You have full archive of your um, writing around Daniel Kinnan on Insider dot com and indeed on uh, other sources as well. Thanks, William, for taking the call. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks a lot. Alan Dawson on the line there, a reporter on boxing and MMA and plenty of uh, reaction to that as well. And it will be fascinating to see uh, what happens after the fight this weekend as to whether those questions arise or not uh, again.